Hello, genealogists. This is Craig, and this is Just Genealogy. And as I promised you yesterday, I am going to talk about handwriting and the books that I have in my library that deal with the concept of handwriting. So remember that what brought us to this point was my conversation about genealogy standards, standards for data collection, standard number 23, reading handwriting. Well, I have several books in my library that I've collected over the years that deal with the concept of handwriting. Probably the first one I ever touched was Harriet Stryker Rhoda's Understanding Colonial Handwriting. It's a, a rather, you know, it's a small pamphlet, and it, it will get you started on understanding the nuances of handwriting. It originally was published in 1980. And it's gone through several iterations and a few revisions. Um, and so this one ends up, uh, the last time it was touched was in 2007. And I don't refer to it much anymore, but in the beginning of my life as a person reading colonial handwriting, I referred to it often. But largely, in my mind, it was replaced by Kip Sperry's reading early American handwriting. And this is a much thicker book. And he deals with the issues of guidelines for reading old documents, abbreviations and contractions. And those are things, abbreviations and contractions, in my mind, from a perspective of understanding handwriting, are probably the most important pieces in the process. And he provides information on terms, uh, numbers and Roman numerals, dates and calendar changes, uh, sample alphabets and handwriting styles. And uh, basically it's in my mind, the other extreme from the Stryker wrote a book. And it, for years I would refer to it. But then the Virginia Genealogical Society put out a guide to 17th century Virginia court handwriting. And because most of the handwriting that I'm actually reading deals with Virginia, I thought this would be a very important book for me to get my hands on. And so I did. And this now probably is the book that I use the most in trying to figure out what is going on if I don't quite understand what I'm seeing. What's very helpful is there are many displays of, for example, letters, displays of first names. Look at Christopher there. As if, if you saw it for the first time, you might think it was a strange gopher. And you might think that corn was corn instead of Cornelius. And one is always confused between Daniel and David. These things are quite helpful. Women's names. I'm not sure that I would have gotten Bridget out of that the first time I went through it. Or Hannah. I think I would have gotten the Joan. Although I would have thought maybe it was Joma. But anyway. And then common abbreviations. So the pieces that you want to look for in a book are, does it deal with abbreviations? Does it deal with months? Does it deal with common first names? Does it deal with men's names? Does it deal with women's names? And I think what I like about the guide to 17th century Virginia colonial court handwriting is that it's uh, just the right size. I can get to what I'm looking for rather quickly by just thumbing through it. Whereas with this very book, it's very comprehensive, but it takes me more time to find what I'm looking for. Of course, that might be because I don't use them as much as I used to anymore. So my familiarity with their contents is not what it used to be uh, because I'm fairly proficient now in reading colonial handwriting, given the years of experience that I have. So there is a new book out there now that's just been published here in 2023 on mastering Spanish handwriting and documents 1520 to 1820. And I've added it to my library, not because I have any 
Spanish handwriting that I need to look at. But because of the depth of material that the rice camps go through in order to get you to understand what kinds of things you're dealing with in handwriting and not just Spanish handwriting, because their concepts can be applied to colonial handwriting also. And they deal with the concept of approaches and attitudes, fundamental paleographic concepts, handwriting in the Spanish language, introduction to records in the humanistic style, and quest for individual salvation. In other words, dealing with baptisms, confirmations, and the Eucharist. And these are the kinds of documents that many times we're going to be dealing with. Deals with other issues like notaries, economics, and society, and the types of notarial records that you may not find in uh, any other books. So it, it expands a little bit farther that concept of notaries and notarial records. And this is a brand new book, 2023. So this today, I've given you some sort of concept about what exists in my library to deal with colonial handwriting and the tools that I use to help me to understand colonial handwriting. And also a good basis in colonial handwriting will help you deal with other handwriting that is of a much later era. So this has been Craig, this has been Just Genealogy, and we are dealing with the concept of handwriting and understanding handwriting. Remember, standard number 23, reading handwriting. Genealogists correctly read all legible handwriting in materials they consult. These are the books that will help you make some of those illegible things in your mind understandable so that they're no longer anything but legible. And I will see you soon.